All right, so today we're talking about the Canik TP9 SC. Picked this gun up recently uh, at my local gun show. I was pretty excited to get a pistol that was ambidextrous, subcompact, nine millimeter, and optic ready. It comes with your manual. Really the most useful thing in this manual is the second to last page where they do a breakdown of every single piece. That way if you need to order a new magazine catch, magazine release, barrel and there's a place for notes as well so that's pretty good for some reason at the gun show that i was at i had an extra 15 round magazine right here um, which is cool but it doesn't have the same base plate which is an issue and i'll get to that in a second so we're gonna put that off to the side your package if you do buy this gun will come with everything you see here the instruction manual a cleaning brush a cleaning rod a 15 round magazine with extended base plate. Of course you have your Canik TP9 um, SC Elite and a uh, plastic holster. This is not Kydex. It's pretty damn close though. And it does have some retention to it. You know, um, you, can, you can hear a nice click when you put it in. You can hear that. And it does have an adjustable, what it looks like to be adjustable retention right here. Um, it's pretty good though. Uh, it's, it's made for right-handed people. You can flip these clips to the to the other side and carry it inside the waistband if you want. It is a right-hand only holster though, and as a lefty, I, I you know it's unfortunate, but you know I do shoot ambidextrous, so I do train my right hand. So if I'm ever at the range and uh, I can wear this outside the waistband and still train with it, so it's good. It's good to have. Switch my magazine release to this side, so that way my left hand manipulations, right? Gun is clear. You do have an ambidextrous slide release here, one on each side. Uh, pretty long levers, but I don't notice myself riding them as much um, as with other guns with long mag or, uh, slide releases. As far as the safeties on this gun, you have a trigger safety here, it's red. As long as I pull this red part in, it will fire. If I don't, no matter how hard I pull, if I don't pull on that red part, it won't fire. Um, you do have a cocking indicator here. So this will not, this will come back whenever the gun is cocked. It doesn't matter if there's a round in the chamber or not. And when you press the trigger, it goes in, cock it comes back and it also has a loaded chamber indicator whenever there's a round in the chamber this will pop up and it has a little bit of red paint on both sides so you'll be able to tell from either side if there's a round in the chamber which is pretty good um i don't find it necessary but it's cool to have especially when you know you're if you're carrying this gun and you just want to do a quick check without you know doing a press check to see if there's a round in the chamber if you'd rather just look at your gun and see you can do that this gun also comes with a pre-cut um, slide for an optic unfortunately you can only mount two optics really the shield rms which is a, a micro red dot the other option is the sig romeo zero sight which is currently on back order everywhere i've, I've pretty much been able to check as of the time of this review so uh, i think it's march 2nd but i will be getting a, a rms zero when those are back in stock all right now that we got the case out of the way here let's take a closer look at the gun itself it is a 3.6 inch barrel handgun overall length is about 6.7 inches um, the overall height of the of the gun is 4.6 inches the grip length is about three and a half inches and the grip width is about 1.3 five inches the overall width of the gun is recorded at 1.45 inches that's with these thick um slide catches without the slide catches the grip is 1.3 inches wide i actually like this grip a lot i feel myself i can get a good purchase on it um unlike with some subcompacts where i still feel like i need a little bit more room in the grip this one has just enough um the bore axis is a little bit high on it, which takes some getting used to if you've never fired a gun other than a Glock or a Smith & Wesson. The sights that this gun comes with is a 
blacked out serrated rear sight. It's a little bit higher than I'm used to, which is good for, you know, if you have to rack it off clothing or something else. And also if your hands are wet to get a grip on this, it's serrated. So it really digs in. So it's not hard to grip on the front sight. You have a, I forgot what this is called, but it's basically where, let's see, hold on one second. If you shine a flashlight on it for a couple seconds, you'll see that it does, you can see it does glow. So at night you can get a better sight picture. I do see myself switching this out for some tritium night sights. Um, I'm not sure if I need it in the rear. I mean, I'll buy them as a kit and see what I like better, just the front or both. So that's everything that comes with the gun. I wanna talk now about some of the issues that I had when I took this out and fired the first 100 rounds through it. And um, main issue I had with this gun, really the main number one issue I had, the magazines on this gun, they don't, they don't eject, like they don't come out, right? Like for reference, you have an FNR Glock, the magazine will just slide right out, right? The magazines on this, I press the mag release and I have to pull the magazine out. And it's the same with the 15 rounder. I don't think it's the magazines as much as it is the mag well. And another issue, which really is um, not my favorite thing about this gun, uh, my least favorite is the included 12 round magazine with a uh, pinky extension. When I rack the slide, it doesn't lock on an empty magazine. And I, you know, I went to my local gun store that has a bunch of these in stock and I tested this magazine in other TP9 Elite SCs. I tested this magazine in other guns and I tested their magazines in my gun. And I've found that it's not the magazine because this magazine does lock back in other, in other TP9. So I think it is my uh, firearm. I do know that um, another YouTuber, I think his name was uh, Justin Opinion, was having issues with the, the slide locking back on empty with this magazine. And I, I'm not sure, I don't know if it's the magwell not, not uh, holding open with these magazines as consistently because let me tell you, I have no problem with the 15 round locking back. It always locks back every time. It'll lock back every time, but it will never lock back with the 12 round magazine. It will never lock back. If I have two rounds in the magazine, right? And nothing in the chamber, it'll put that first round in, I'll fire and the it'll fail to cycle that last round in. It's probably a mag spring issue. That's what I'm leaning towards here. Um, I'll look more into it, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, as far as shooting this gun, in the first 100 rounds I put through it, I had um, a few failures to feed I th with this magazine specifically. It might just be the magazine. And I had one light primer strike. This is a Browning 124 grain, uh, nine millimeter full metal jacket. Out of the 100 rounds I fired, I probably put about 60 to 70 rounds of this um, Browning 9 millimeter, 124 grain full metal jacket. About 20 rounds of Hornady Critical Duty, um, 135 grain plus P ammunition. And the rest was this Blazer 9 millimeter, 115 grain ammo. I also fired a few of these. These are my carry rounds, Federal, 135 grain Hydroshock JHP. I was worried if it might have some issues cycling these rounds as they are hollow points, but no issues. I gotta say, I really do like shooting this gun. Um, Canics are notorious. They have a, some people like to call it an enhanced trigger. That's what I like to call it. I don't wanna call it like a, a race trigger or anything like that. It's enhanced, it's a, it's a sub four pound pull. And if you can see here, you have your take up, your wall, and your break. Here, I'll show you again your take up, wall, break, and your reset, reset, 
break. Virtually no creep on this trigger. The reset is extremely short on this. That's it, right there. So fast you might miss it. Um, yeah, and I could do that all day. Uh, field stripping this is pretty straightforward. Um, unlock the slide back. Pull on the two tabs and drop your slide. Pull the trigger, slide comes forward. You're gonna lift up on the slide to come off. It's not like a Glock, it doesn't just slide forward straight off. You do have to pull up and be careful because you can damage your frame rails if you just pull on it. This has had, like I said, about 150 rounds through it and it still looks pretty clean. There's not much of anything really in there. Um, if you want, I can make a video on how to swap the uh, magazine release, but those videos exist. That's pretty much how I figured out how to do it. So it seemed pretty redundant to put more videos out there on it. Pull out your recoil spring. And your barrel assembly. There you go, you have a 3.6 inch barrel. I honestly have no idea if this is a match grade barrel or anything like that. I've only fired 150 rounds. I'll update again at 500 rounds, 1000 rounds and so forth. And let you know if there are any issues i'll also update you as far as the mag magazine situation is concerned um and see if any of that can be resolved to reassemble i try to line up I try to line up this piece here with this here on the slide this little cutout and it usually goes better for me there we go racket it and you're back in business you don't have to pull and you don't have to slide or turn anything. You just rack it and you're good to go. I mean, this is basically just this is basically just an unboxing video. I just wanted to talk about what I like, what I didn't like. Hopefully I can get that magazine thing fixed. I really did want a subcompact 9mm that had a 1913 Picatinny rail and a optic ready uh, slide. And this thing fits all those boxes, but you know and it shoots very well. The only thing I would say is I do need to figure out, I might just end up carrying with only these mags, just order some of more of these 15 rounders. Um, I will try putting a new uh, spring in this magazine and see if that fixes it. But otherwise, yeah, this is a great gun. I will be updating after 500 rounds and you know, after a thousand rounds just to see what else has gone through. I may try firing some more ammunition types through it. Just so again, you know, these are the, these are the ammunition types that I've fired. Got your Federals, your Browning, your Hornady, and your Blazer. Oh, you know what? I have, I've also fired some Fioki, uh, nine millimeter, 115 grain through it. Hopefully I covered everything, probably didn't, but if I didn't, let me know in the comments. And if you want more information, just message me and I'll, do my best to get back to you and until then you guys stay safe and uh carry on